evening, morning or afternoon, wherever you are. It's been a really nice day here today, but I lose track of what days I'm on. You know, yesterday I spoke to my daughter-in-law and she asked me if I could go over on these two days, on the Thursday of the 6th of June and Tuesday the 11th. Right, so, and I said, okay then, and then she phoned me up today and she's going, I've worked with dad today and then she phoned me up today. She might like to come over on the um, 6th because my son might be at home. I mean, oh, okay. So, but we'll come up after school. No, the Tuesday, sorry. Tuesday the 11th, sorry. You won't have to come on Tuesday the 11th because uh, my son might be at home. Can you pick her up, pick him up for his lunch? And I went, okay. So, but we'll bring him up after school so you get to see him before you go down. To my daughters, I went, okay. Then I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll come out to you, I'll come to you. And then we talked, and I said, and I went, Where's, where is Ellis? And she said, because I could hear my granddaughter talking away, and um, she went, is that his other grands? I went, what day are we on? <laughs> I said, what day are we on? I said, Saturday. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm losing it. I'm losing it big time. <laughs> because I don't go out anywhere. <coughs> <coughs> if I do go out, it's only to my local shops. And if I'm out more than half an hour, more than half an hour, it's a miracle. Because I tend to know what I want. And I just go get what I want and then come home. Because I don't like being outside. <laughs> I really don't. I don't like people around me because they, they annoy me. So I try not to go out. <laughs> so because of that, I lose track of all my days and everything. And I say, no, no, I'll tell you what, I'll come to you on the um, Tuesday. I said, I'll come over to you. I said, because it'll get me out, <laughs> out the house. <laughs> right, but I'm over there Thursday, this next Thursday. And then I'm back there again on the Friday because I, uh, I'll, pick, I'll go and get my grandson for the weekend. So. Oh, God, but just so confusing, I lose all track of days, right? So I hope you've all had a nice Saturday, or are, or you are having a nice Saturday. So there's still a lot of talk going on on the YouTube streets about a certain interview of the other night, but we'll talk about that on Monday when I talk about Sebastian. Tonight, we're looking at Whitney Hatfield. This case was brought to my attention by one of my subscribers. And I can't believe I haven't got any attention. You know what I mean? I just can't. She was last seen in the vicinity of the poor 600 block of Main Street, South Salem. Ohio. She was living with her grandparents, right? And she disappeared between 1.30 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. on March the 7th. And um, as I said, she was living with her grandparents. Originally, she was living with her mother, right, from Alabama. But she, she asked, she said to her mother, like, she said, because she was 16, I believe. I think she's 16, what's her age? I can't remember now. I did write it down somewhere. 
and because her, her grandfather passed away, she wanted to go and live with the grandmother to help her, you know what I mean, give her some support and help her around the house and everything. But she was only there about a month from what I can make out before she went missing. Hi, SG. Hope you're okay. Right, so she's only there about a, a month at her grandmother's before she went missing. And uh, I've got a couple of videos to show you. Right. And um, it's just, and apparently she, she, was, she liked to speak to men who are older than herself, which is a bit strange, but fair enough. I must admit, I always got on better with people who, men or boys who are older than me, always. Probably because I always had three older brothers. You know what I mean? So boys my own age, it was like, you're talking to me. Don't think so. Go away. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say older, older. I'd say those like, uh, between three and five years older than me, I'll talk to, I could get on with, you know what I mean? So, for a 16 year old, for, mm, I wouldn't say age comes into it, but at 16, if you're dating some, if you're 16 and you're dating someone who's 26, that's a, that's like a hell of a big difference. Right, people look at that and think, well, that's 10 years or whatever. But if you're 19 and talking to someone, or 18, sorry, and talking to someone who's 28, oh, that's okay. You know what I mean? It's a, those two years between 16 and 18 make a lot of difference, apparently. I don't see how. It's still the same age, still 10 years old or whatever. But apparently she would talk to guys who were older than herself. And um, we're going to watch a video. The first one I'm going to show you is the mother, if I can find it again. Right. I have to go on my Facebook page and I'll find it. Because I, I just come across this page by accident today. I just typed in. I thought, I wonder if they've got a, fa a, pa oh, a Facebook page open for her. And they have right, and it was here that I found the two videos. I know one of them is on my Facebook, but I want to show you the one with the mother first talking. So, we have to go some way down the page. So, it's, it's weird, and um, because she, she left a note at the grandmother's. She, in fact, she left two notes. The first note saying uh, that she was going to a friend's to help babysit and that the, the father was a doctor and she'll be, she's okay, she's going to get paid for it and all this lot. But then later on, in the early hours of the morning, they find another note. Oh, what was that interview from? No, I bet I won't be able to find it now. Hold on, let me see. But then they found another note under the brother's pillow, and it was saying, please convince Grandma not to phone the police because it won't, it won't end good. You know what I mean? 
So one note she's saying she's okay, she's just going to babysit for, for her family, like a living nanny, I suppose she's trying to say. Right, and that she's going to get paid and all this lot. But then, and another note to her brother that she put under his pillow or wherever. Uh, so she's going to try and convince Grandma not to phone the police because it won't end good. So it's a bit weird. Two, two notes, two different. It's only a short one, this one, because it's a news, Fox News, 19 now. So it's not a long one, it's only a short one. Yeah, the second note is so odd. So, um, oh yeah, I'm just trying to sort the screen out. I've got to take this off first. Um, but you'll hear about them more in the interview the grandparents, the grandmother gives. Yo up. So, oh, let's just take that off there for that. And let's, oh God, I've got hiccups. Sorry. Sorry if the hiccups are coming up over the mic. I'm trying not to. 16 year old. Whitney Hatfield was last seen in Ross County, Ohio on March 7th and hasn't contacted any of her loved ones since. Courtney King spoke with her mother in an interview you'll also see right here on Fox 19 now. Yeah, Trisha and Rob, we want to go ahead and show you some of these flyers that you might have seen already that show Whitney and her missing case here. You might see them if you're in the Clinton County and Highland County areas because she has family there, but they're starting to pop up here in Loveland because this is where her mother lives. And we spoke with her mom who tells us that she feels lost without her. I've always said uh, since becoming a mother that my worst fear is not knowing where my children are. For almost two months, Michelle Hatfield has been trying to find her daughter, 16-year-old Whitney Hatfield. There's been nothing. Um, no sighting of her, no just crickets nothing. Whitney was last seen on Main Street in South Salem, Ohio on March 7th. Only her toothbrush and a few toiletries were missing from Whitney's room. That's it. She didn't take her purse, uh, no extra shoes, no clothes. Everything was there. Michelle says the family is originally from Alabama, but Whitney asked to move to Ohio after her grandfather died. She wanted to, to come to Ohio, uh, according to what she told me, um, and support her grandmother. And it, it seemed so mature for her age at the time that I entertained the idea of her doing that. Michelle says Whitney has talked to older men online before and is worried that she is with one. So I'm really concerned that she was groomed. There's no way that she's with a child. They would have been out of resources by now. But the mom also says Whitney has never run away before or snuck out and has never done drugs. Never had that kind of trouble with sis. Michelle says not knowing where her daughter is keeps her up at night, and she also has problems eating. Why do you feel guilty when you eat? I don't know if she's eating. It's indescribable. The pain and the fear, because it's always there. Michelle did start a petition to get Facebook to release her daughter's activity before she disappeared. And if you have any information on where Whitney may be, you're asked to call the Ross County Sheriff's Office. We have their information for you on our website, Fox 19 Now. All right, now that's the one by the mother. But I, I can understand her when she says she has trouble eating because I must admit, if that takes me to to but no, not a purse. Yeah, why take those things but not your purse? All right, but we're going to learn more, and it's like a phone, something about a phone. You can't get internet, but you can get tracking or something. But we're going to find that out in the next interview, I'll show you, because you get more information on that one. But it's just... I don't understand what, did she meet someone, this person online, before she moved up, back up to her grandmother's, you know what I mean? 
because well yeah i'm just gonna apply the mother's one because that one explains it a lot better than what i can explain it okay so i'll just play that Okay, so this is the second interview, and this is the grandmother, and I believe she said it was her aunt. And if you cannot contact us, then just know that we're doing everything we can to get you home and get you safe. I'm Ryan. I'm Tessa. And we are the co-founders of Missing People in America. Uh, and we are today we are interviewing the family of Whitney Hatfield. And who do we have the pleasure of speaking with? My name is Linda Lester. I'm Whitney's grandmother. And I'm Brenda Lester. I'm Whitney Van. You can go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about Whitney. Um, well, Whitney was pretty much your average teenager. Um, like, liked her clothes, liked makeup. Um, she liked the outdoors. Um, Whitney likes, uh, loves animals, absolutely loves animals and all animals. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a frog or it could be a kitty cat or it could be a snake. She loves them all. Um, she likes to draw. She draws hearts and eyes and hands because she said, if you can draw those then you're a true artist, um, Whitney, is kind of shy when you first meet her. Um, it takes a little while for her to warm up, but then once once she gets to know you, she's pretty outgoing with you. She's helpful. She's very helpful. Yes, and always she's always coming up with these little trivia facts. Grandma, did you know? And I'd be like, No, I didn't know that. <laughs> she watches these shows all the time with facts on. Whitney is uh, sixteen years old, and uh, she went missing in March. March Correct. 2024 from South Salem, Ohio. Uh, she was originally living in Alabama and she moved up here with you guys and that's disappeared roughly a, a month after she moved up there. Correct. Yes. So go ahead and uh, tell everybody the story about uh, her disappearance. I work night shift. So when I came home that morning, um, when I saw Whitney. She was fine. She didn't have any, uh, any, issue she wasn't mad she wasn't sad she wasn't upset about anything just a normal morning um i went to bed and then about 12 30 i got up because i i just wake up and i got up and i was sitting in the kitchen and she came through and we talked a little bit and, and then she went back to her room and about 1 30 i went back to bed and i heard her talking on her on her phone when I went through to my room and I yelled out, Whitney, I'm going to bed. I'm going back to bed. She said, okay, good night, Memo. And I went back to bed. Then about 1.30, 2.30, 30, my son woke me up and said, mom, where's Whitney? And I said, well, I suppose she's in her room. And he said, no, her room, the door to her room is open. She's not in there. She's not in the bathroom. Um, and I don't see her anywhere. So and we found a note that she had written on the living in, on the living room uh, end table. And in the note, she said that she was going to go with her friend. She was going to um, babysit her friend's siblings, um, that she would have baby's money and um, the family had money. Parents was a doctor and she would be safe. And that she would contact us when she when she could. Um, so from there, uh, that's where our nightmare began. We called the police came out and made a report, and we called the search and rescue. Um, and then later on that night, about four thirty in the morning, we found a note under my son's pillow 
that she had written to him asking him to please talk me out of calling the plea in good. And so then there we've done ground searches and flyers and what we can do. So why would she write the one note saying she's going with a friend, she's going to be babysitting, um, and she's going to get paid for it. But why would she only, A, take her toiletry, no clothes, no change of clothes, no purse, nothing, apart from her phone, right? So... I don't understand why she'd take those things and nothing else. I really don't understand that. You know what I mean? Because if you're going to go somewhere, you always put a, and you know you're going to be out for over the night, overnight maybe, because you're babysitting. Right? But then again, perhaps you thought she was going to be back the next day. But then why would she write that note? For her brother saying uh convince grandma not to phone the police it, it won't end good why would she put that note and then only take those toiletries it's, it doesn't make sense so you have the uh k-19 come out there and search and rescue and what happened with that um the first time they brought one dog and um they took the dog around the, our little town it's only like a little over 200 people small village and um the, they picked up her scent and it led to the, our local our school and our library there in the little town that's connected so it led to the library and the dogs were at the door like she'd, she'd gone inside so that would have been on friday um, on Saturday, they did ground search and had three different canines come out. And this time they took the canines to my home and started there. And from there, they tracked her, her track, you know, the route she took, she walked, um, between our properties, like if the back of my property and the back of the neighbor's property, um, she walked that property line up through up until she came to an alley and then she walked from the alley up towards the school um walked turned and walked past the school um in front of the school there is a abandoned house and we've learned that if you sit on that house you can pick up the school's wi-fi so she sat on that on that uh porch for a little while and then she went beside the school is an old cemetery so from there, she went back into that old cemetery and she went all the way to the back of the cemetery. And Brenda drove back there um, after we were searching. And from back there, you could see cars coming in either direction. You have a very good view of what's going on around you. Um, so she sat back there in the back for a while. And then she came out of the cemetery, but she used the other exit, the one farthest away from the school, she came out that exit and um, started to walk up Old Westfall Road. And from there, it, when it goes into the first curve of the road, she um, the dogs lost her scent. And so they believe she got into a car at that point. And uh, they had three different three different dogs confirm the same. And. She had a phone, but uh, you said it was a track phone that did not have cell phone service of any kind, and that she... Right, so... They track her all the way up to there, up to that cemetery, all the way out to that cemetery again, so far up the road where the road bends, went into a bend, and then the dogs lose track of her. Right? Which means she got into a vehicle. Oh, God. So, was she messaging that person when she was by that old house, the empty house? I think, what was that, SG? 
I think person came to door that she knew. I think first, you know, person made her like, you know, downstairs. Wouldn't you mm -hmm. tell person I have to go upstairs and get some stuff? And she's just, she snuck and you know, to her brother. No, I don't, no, because if you look at that map, right, it shows you, right? Oh, no, I'm going to get back to that map. Right. It shows you here. We'll go through it again. She comes along, oh, no, comes along here. Along this route here. Right. Onto there. So... Hey. Um, she walked that property line up through, up until she came to an alley, and then she walked from the alley up towards the school, um, walked, turned, and walked past the school. Um, in front of the school, there is a abandoned house, and we've learned that if you sit on that house, you can pick up the school's Wi-Fi. So she sat on that, on that uh, porch for a little while, and then she went... Beside the school is an old cemetery. So from there, she went back into that old cemetery and she went all the way to the back of the cemetery. And Brenda drove back there um, after we were searching. And from back there, you could see cars coming in either direction. You have a very good view of what's going on around you. Um, so she sat back there in the back for a while. And then she came out of the cemetery, but she used the other exit, the one farthest away from the school. She came out that exit and um, started to walk up Old Westfall Road. And from there, it, when it goes into the first curve of the road, she, um, the dogs lost her scent. And so they believe she got into a car at that point. And um, they had three different, three different dogs confirm the same. We said, I don't think anyone came up to the house because it says the dog's tracked her all the way up to the school, out by that old house, from the old house up to the cemetery. I think when she got to the school, she went on, got internet, and kind of like said, right. Well, How can dogs know she was alone? They can't. A dog can't tell if a person is alone. You know what I mean? They track that person's scent. Right? But it just... I know she probably w could probably walk that way to go to school. Would she have been at school at that time in March? Yeah, she would have been in school at that time. So why was why wasn't she in school in March? Perhaps she didn't go to school no more. Perhaps she wasn't going to school. You know what I mean? Sixteen. You no, know, you're normally eighteen, aren't you? When you're finishing, they're eighteen now in the UK. You no, know, they've upped it to eighteen before you can leave. Um, so, I don't understand, unless you messaged them and they said, we're needed there, and so she's going to sit on the bench, or whatever, or message them again from the bench, whatever, well, perhaps she's just checking to see if any messages have come through. And that when she walked to the cemetery, she, as I said, you could see cars coming and going. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> she's probably seen the car go past her, and so she's walked out the cemetery and looked to the road and got in the car. So, but the dogs can't tell if she's alone or not. Unless they know she left with someone, then they can get the um, dogs to track their scent as well. 
But why the two notes and why only the toilet trees? I can understand where you're coming from. Oh, I've got to go back. I've just miss, uh, forgot some. I've just got to go and pick some up. You know what I mean? And that's when she put that even late in. But, hmm. I think someone will be seeing her getting a car because someone did see her between half one and half two. Someone did see her. So if someone's seeing her, they'd be seeing her getting into a car. Anyway, let's watch this because it does explain it a bit more. <coughs> oh, sorry. And you need a phone, but uh, you said it was a track phone that did not have cell phone service of any kind and that she took that phone with her. That's correct. And wh where do you uh, you believe that she met somebody using a social media app? I do. I I believe she met someone. Um, like you said, uh, Whitney was originally from Alabama, um, was living in Alabama and came to stay with me. And it's my belief that she met someone online and was groomed from Alabama to... Um, I think the plan was to get her up here closer to whoever she's with. Right. Picked her up. Her excuse to come up to Ohio was yes. to, uh, a very sad um, death in your family. Yes. Her grandfather had passed away. Uh, my partner for 30 years and um, he passed away in July and she told her mom that she felt bad that I was up here and she wanted to come up here. And since Papa passed away, she wanted to come up and be a help to me and be company to me. And that's what she told her mom why she wanted to come up. And at the time, uh, she wasn't doing very well in school, as you'd said before. And she was working on her GED. She Well, she hadn't actually entered a GED program. That was the plan. In our area, they had kind of stopped some of the GED programs because of COVID. But they were looking at starting them back up. So I told her to get her name on the list so that it would be local. Or we wouldn't have to because we're a very small area. So, you know, we didn't want to have to travel real far if we didn't have to. Right. So she wasn't in school. That's right. Well, she obviously knew about that house. She obviously knew about how you could sit on that house, on that porch, that old empty house and get the internet. Right. So, hmm. Needs a lot more looking. And she'd been in the area before. Uh, she, you said she would come up up there in the summers. Mm -hmm. She, um, she would. The family would come in and visit, and she'd stay for her, well, all. Well, well, all of the kids stayed for a while. Um, at one point, she had lived with us um, on a, in a camper on our property while um, they were getting their home ready. And um, so she was no stranger to my, my home. Um, but what she didn't do um, is she wasn't out like among the community, out in the community. You know, she didn't she wasn't out walking around and that type of stuff. You know, she stayed or pretty much at home. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't out to meet me, is what I'm saying. Um, well, I think the, the train of thought there is to think that someone local is kind of not the yeah. thought that we have because she never got out and socialized in the community like that to make friends like that. So to think that it was someone local that she may be with is kind of not where we're at in our thinking. Right. Uh, and then, uh, as you uh, had mentioned, she um, she wanted to come from Alabama to Ohio. And so your thoughts are that whoever she met is in that region. Yes, that that this was at least closer to them. Um, you know, Alabama is pretty far down there. Ohio, you know, come to Ohio, you're, it, it, you know, if it's five hours closer, it's 
And we did have the guy from New York reach out to us mm -hmm. um, that he had spoke to her multiple times through Snapchat. And um, she had talked to him about things, um, personal things with her. So I knew that it was from her because what she said. Knew. So he knew these things and he was, you know, um, talking and he said, well, I met her on Snap. Um, and he's an older person, like older man. Right. My now, yeah. did the police uh, confront this person or did he openly uh, reach out to you guys? No, he openly reached yeah. out to us. So he saw the, the flyer, or maybe saw yeah. that she hadn't been active uh, and started yeah. researching it and realized that she's yeah. missing. Okay. We talked about this before. She's not the one to just leave a note and leave and uh, not tell anyone. No, she never left her home and you know with her parents she'd never left and then she'd never left our home either without somebody knowing when she left she did take uh, her toothbrush and shampoo and conditioner and some yeah she took some personal skincare items her shampoo and conditioner were out of the shower um i believe she probably packed this stuff in a bag a black bag um because she brought stuff in like personal hygiene stuff in a black bag and that i haven't seen that black bag around and um, a witness that saw her said she wasn't carrying anything, but she looked thicker than in the pictures. So we think she had the like a backpack or whatever underneath her jacket. Um, so I, if she took clothes, I wouldn't know because she had so many and so much. So she didn't, if she did take anything like clothes, it be, won't be a lot because it, by what the grandmother was saying, it wasn't a big bag. She probably had it on her back, on a, like a rucksack sort of thing, like a sporty, you know, those sporty sort of bags you can buy, the drawstring ones, right? And um, it's probably a bag like that. So you wouldn't get a lot in there, but why take only? Toiletries and face and your facial facial clean cleansers and things like that. Why? That doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Um, I'm just puzzled by this. Much shoes, but I don't think she could fit much in that bag if if that's the bag. She had. So when she left, there was actually a witness that saw her walking down the road. Yes. Yes. Now you prior we talked about her you guys getting access to any of her phone or social medias and you were able to get uh, into her facebook but there wasn't really anything in there that's correct the police at first facebook denied the request and but they finally were able to get into it through a warrant or a subpoena or whatever it is and they were finally able to get into it but the sheriff's department's telling us that there's nothing there to help so um i'm I'm pretty sure she was probably on Snap, where everything just disappears. Right. Yeah, I actually, take for Facebook to actually answer the request. Oh, it took a while because it, it probably took a good week, week and a half after they got the subpoena. Wow, that's yeah, it wasn't quick because, and the way the the uh, officer explained it to me is, um, you know, she's considered a runaway. So she's down here. Then you have abducted up. So they're going to go with abducted to the line of, you know, like a order of urgency, I guess. Right. So she would have been below all, anybody who was abducted. Abducted. Well, and I mean, odd fact, we counted it up last night. And just in Ohio alone, there's been since witnessing as of the date yesterday, 232 missing kids out of Ohio. 200. And 32 missing out of Ohio since Whitney up till that day before they did this interview, which was a few months ago, a month or so ago. Right? That's a lot. That's a lot of children. You know what I mean? How many would it be over a year? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah. It's crazy. It is. Yeah, there, there, oh. there, there is a lot of a lot of missing. Uh, Sixty-four percent of all the missing are uh, under the age of eighteen, and they like to mark a lot of them off as runaways. Yes, uh, there was an Amber Alert. Uh, Tess, you want to tell them about that one? Uh, that was, I believe, last Friday. It came out as a runaway that she left the note. She managed to turn her phone off. And at what or turn turn on her phone at one point and text her mom and dad that she was abducted and that um she was forced to write the note and they ended up finding her a state or two away in a motel and uh once they got that text they upgraded it to an amber alert which that amber alert took more than an hour to come out <laughs> Now, Whitney's Whitney's note, they had that analyzed, and they're 80% sure it's her handwriting. Um, I'm not saying she wasn't forced to write it, but um, her handwriting seemed to change <laughs> actually additional samples to evaluate because her handwriting changes so much from one to the next. But they're 80% sure that was her handwriting. Now, her parents, they live in Alabama, correct? Correct. Uh, how how much have they been involved in her missing? Well, um, her mom came up from Alabama. Let's see. She went missing on Thursday. Her mom came up. She got up here. I think it was the following Monday evening. Um, she stayed in, um, I think it was Loveland or somewhere up and down and around Cincinnati with family. That she was there. Um, and then I don't know, she was here probably 10 days, you think, or so, and then went back. Um, they notified team, um, uh, the Center for Exploited and Missing Children and worked with them on Team Hope and um, did some things there. And then we had the, the search here, you know, locally doing um, search here. And you guys have been doing a lot of outreach from what you were telling us earlier. Uh, oh, we're trying. Tell us about uh, all your outreach that you've been doing. Um, well, we started a uh, Bring Whitney Hatfield homepage on Facebook. Um, that's where we, we pretty much keep everybody updated. We, I think we, I don't remember her. Did we mention when she moved up to you from Alabama? That's the page y'all find. Whitney, Whitney came to me, um, it was in February. Um, I believe it was like February 7th or 8th that she arrived in South Salem. And um, she was here and then she, she disappeared on March 7th. So she was just here a month. And you said she was really eager to uh, come up there. Yeah. Um, when, she, when they asked me about it, I had some things I had to get in place. Uh, I needed to think about it because, you know, I'm older and I wasn't sure I wanted to take on a teenager and had some things I needed to do to the house. Um, and so it took me a while to him all around and decide. And she was she was kind of like urgent, you know, memo, you know, when can I can I come or what do you think? Am I going to be able to come? It was it was more urgent. She was getting more urgent about it. So I said, go ahead and, you know, come on up. And her so, biological parents are the ones that live in Alabama. No. That was no. That was asked. no, actually her actually she's adopted. Her adoptive parents um are from uh, well, she was originally in Alabama. And that's not I'm sorry, let me start over. She was originally from Montana. Okay. And that's where her adoptive parents were living when they adopted her and her two brothers. Okay. Okay, since then they moved to Ohio to be near dad or my my husband be near her dad and then um so they lived in circleville for a short time here in ohio and then from here they moved to alabama oh. so her biological mother is in Alab is in montana and i'm not sure about the father did she have any type of a uh, uh, relationship or communication with them at all her mother the biological mother was on her facebook do you believe Mom. that she would want to take her back at any point, whether it be willingly or not? Uh, I don't know. I don't know her, yeah. but it was it was a pretty bad situation that Whitney came from. Um, but 
No, that makes a bit more sense. Right. She was adopted, which I've got here, but I thought the mother we heard earlier was the adopted mother, but obviously not. So she was adopted. She lived in... Hold on. She was originally from Montana. Adopted. Then they moved to Alabama. So her adopted mother and father moved to Alabama. Her original mother died in Montana. Now, could this person she was talking to be someone not from her family? Uh, she thought it was someone else, but actually be someone from her mother's her biological side of the family. Hmm. You know what I mean? Could that have been the point? Could she, could they have took her? Someone from the mother's side of the family have took her. Been speaking to her. But the mother said in that interview that she said she wanted to go up to Alabama, so that's what threw me. So was that the adopted mother? That don't make sense. If she's adopted, then she's living with her adopted parents, mother and father, yep. Yeah? So why was the mother, the biological mother, if that's the, the interview we just saw, saying my worst fear was never knowing where my daughter was? You know what I mean? If she was adopted, her mother wouldn't even know where she was. Some adoption laws they have, I know in America, they have like, uh, where they're, it's an open like, adoption, so the mother can still keep in touch with the child. Right? Some are cl uh, closed adoptions where the mother, the biological mother or father, will not know where the child is. So, this is confusing with the mother and biological, uh, the adopted parents. What? Oh, I'm going to have to dig deep into this one. They're not making this easy for me. Whitney, Whitney has a distorted sense of that period in her time and of time. Um, when she talks to her brothers, she talked to her brothers about mom doing this and that and that. And from what I understand, mom didn't do this and that and that. Um, so I think she has a, I don't know. I don't know if she wants to believe it or if somehow she's got things twisted around, you know, you know how it is when they're little, you don't know what they're, but she talks talked well over mom about the mom at one point. Now I I haven't heard her say anything about her recently. Does her biological mother know she's missing or she does. I reached out to her. Okay. And so does her biological brother that they did not adopt. Yes. There's one more brother that they did not adopt. Were they shocked by it or did they, you know, kind of seem calm like all she said to me was I messaged her because I was going through Facebook and stuff, and I seen, so I texted Linda, and I said, who is this person? And she said, that's her biological mother. So I messaged her, and I said, um, have you heard from Whitney? And she said, I, I am aware that she is missing. And that was her conversation with me. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that's kind of odd. And we actually... Um called one of the police up there in Montana to do a well, like a well check. Right. But she had moved. They didn't, they, she wasn't at that address. Mm. And you don't know anything about her communicating anything about this to any of her friends or anything like that? No. The only thing we know is that her mom, she had an ex-boyfriend and in Alabama and she has a friend down there. And, um, Missy, her mom said that the sheriff's department was supposed to send someone out to talk to those two, but according to her, it didn't happen. 
And so um, Missy went over and talked to the boy ex-boyfriend. And he said he had heard from her at some point and that she said she had a boyfriend. And that's all he knew. He couldn't remember his name. And then um, the other one, the, the, the girl, I don't think anybody talk, ever talked to her. Okay. Now, when we say Missy, that's Michelle. Because Whitney's yeah, mother. Yeah, Whitney's mother. Michelle Hatfield. We call her Missy. Is she very active in her missing? Or is she just, like, laid at, like... Um, I haven't seen a lot put out. We haven't physically seen her since Whitney went missing. Okay. Yeah, she came to Greenfield, which is right outside of my, where I live. Greenfield's where a I bigger live. town. Yeah, and did an interview with the rescue people, but I never saw her. I, I, I got a community question for you. I know we won't ask this before. Sure. Does she have computers, iPad, etc. The only thing she had was her phone that didn't has never had service on it. And then she had an iPod, an, um, an older iPod. And uh, Search and Rescue took that iPod, but they couldn't find anything on it. Right. And this was a, a, a track phone. And uh, we, we, we talked about uh, something earlier that you can look into. Now, do the police have a, a, a subpoena or something to ping that phone if it ever turns on? They said, well, what they told me is... When we were waiting on Facebook to give us their records, they said, once Facebook gives us those records, if we can get them, if she well, then we'll have her address to the device, wh whatever it's called. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. We'll have that. And then if she uses it, then we'll be able to, you know, ping it. But then after they got into Facebook and I asked him about it, I said, now you said, that you'd be able to tra track it if she used it. And, he's, and then he goes into, well, if she's on Wi-Fi, it's going to depend. It's just going to show where she's at at the time. And I'm like, okay, that's better than blind. Right. Um, we're just not getting a lot of help. We're just not. I don't feel like this case has been a priority with, with the police, the sheriff department. Um, I, just, I just don't think she's, she's a priority to them. This is Whitney Hatfield's flyer. She's missing out of South Salem, Ohio. She went missing March 7, 2024. She is 16 years old. She's five foot four, weighs about 130 pounds. If you have any information or tips, you can reach out to the Ross County Sheriff's Office at 740-773-1185. Um, spread our flyer, spread any flyer, doesn't matter. And just post it in your community. A lot of people don't know the faces of the missing because they don't follow pages like this or any any in general. So they're left clueless. So if you can help, she could be anywhere, anywhere in the Ohio and any region around that. We believe that she's that's where she's at. If you guys can help. All right, so hmm. That is that's just got me even more confused. Was that first interview we saw her biological mother her, or the adoptive, adoptive mother? Because it, she said, my worst fear was never not knowing where my daughter was. Well, she was adopted. 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 So... Why aren't the adoptive parents talking? If that was her biological mother, she's the one who said she asked her if she wanted to go to grandma's house. You know what I mean? So, this is... <clears throat> right, hold on. Adoptive, adoptive. I need to find out about them. By a mother. Um, 
Who was she living with when she went? She was living with the grandparents' grandparents. So you got the grandparents, grandmother. All right. She was living with the grandmother. She'd been there about one month before she went missing. She told her mother that she wanted. The, yeah, this is much deeper. Because I'm confused, SG. Right? That interview. I'll go and get off this one. Uh, that interview we just saw. I'm not sure if I've got it on my Facebook or not. No, I don't think I have. Uh, that interview we just saw with the mother, was that a bio mother? You know what I mean? And if it was, right? If that was their bio mother, where the adopted parents? This is so confusing. It'd be easier if you knew. Well, I'm just going to go back now and find that interview. See what they said. So... Hmm. Hold on, what was that then? Billy West. Who's Billy West? Let's put him on my list. <laughs> so I'm making a list here. Of all the people I need to check into. I'm trying to find, oh, there's a visual here. Is this a video? Yeah. This was the 6th of April. We'll watch that in a minute. You can, but I want to find that interview again. I want to go back over that very first interview. Where the hell is it? Oh no, let's see if I can find it this way. I know it was, I wrote it down. Uh, Fox 19 News, no. Because she said she asked her if she could go and live with her grandmother. So that has to be exactly this is it's just oh god. That's what's confusing me now between the mother and the adopted parents. And I can't find that flipping interview. Because this is there's an interview.
Fahren, ja, fahren, wir müssen ja. That's so annoying because we just watched that interview. And I can't think. Now I can't find it. Hmm. So. I'll have a look on YouTube. Right. Uh, oh, God. Right. Let's have a look. Whitney. Interview with Mother yet? Yeah, I tried that. Oh god, this is how we can't get the spelling world. Oh, there's a, uh, doing Whitney Hatfield home, Ohio teen mum begs for help finding her daughter. Okay, let's have a look at this. This is a YouTuber, and sleuth mum. So, I'll just put down the acknowledge. Sleuth. Right. Right, I'll just share this with you. Let's get past all this. Bad situation. Um, her family is extremely concerned about her. Hi, Emily. Hi, Roberta. And so... We are going to talk about that case today. I do also want to remind you guys that Elijah is still missing as well. Yes, being a little video. Reason if they're too much for you to handle, if if some mention or the follow. Let's see. I can do it like this. I'm just trying to skip through a bit so that we just get, oh yeah, wow. Ready to get home. Rescue 101, search and rescue. And today. Yeah, this woman here, right, look different from the ever in the woman we just seen. So this the adoptive mother or the bio mother. It says the, um, Green Whitney Home, teen's mum begs for help finding her daughter. Now, that's a totally different woman. So perhaps that first interview was her adoptive mother. And this is her real mother. Let's listen. Okay, we'll listen to this. Hey, I'm here with Linda Lester, Whitney Hatfield's grandmother. Um, who Whitney was staying with when she went missing on March 7th, around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So, Linda, we're going to talk today about uh, Whitney and her disappearance and how it's affected your family. Okay. Can you share some fond memories of Whitney with us that highlight her personality and interest? Whitney loved to draw. Um, she loved to, to doodle and draw and write. Um, she was or is a very uh, fun-loving child. Um, she's very bright, very bright. Loves to experience new things. Um, really kind of kept to herself. Um, other than she you know she she did like her um, electronics like most young kids nowadays. What 
are some of Whitney's favorite hobbies and activities that she loved doing uh, at, when she had free time at your house? Well, like I said, she loved to draw. Um, she, she wrote in a journal. Um, she was starting to get into, um, I believe, Reiki and, and worrying about the chakras and that sort of thing. Um, she liked to research that kind of stuff. Has Whitney ever talked about places that she would like to visit or a spot that she frequent that means a lot to her? Not that I recall her ever saying that she would, there was not any way that she would particularly want to go. She liked, I mean, she liked to experience, she liked to, to go places and learn and see things, but I don't remember her ever specifically saying somewhere specific she wanted to go. How would Whitney's friends and relatives describe her? Um, Whitney, uh, gosh, Whitney, she, she liked to, uh, um, I don't know what time. She would, um, she was adaptable to who she was with. If she was with younger kids, she could play with the younger kids. If she was with older, then she, you know, acted older. It just depended on who she was with. She, but she, um, she liked the young kids. She would play with them. You know, she was good at babysitting, good with babies, good with kids. Are there any significant milestones or events it's coming up moment. that Whitney was yeah. looking forward to? Yes. So, just going to pause for a second and say that. Whoever was talking to her must have known this because, again, one of the things that she wrote in her letter said about she was going to go babysit for this individual. You know, they were a doctor's family. She was going to go babysit for them. So, again, you know, these these predators, these these people who groom children and and prey on them, a lot of times, I think, take that time to get to know that child and then take everything that they're interested in, all of their all of their hopes and dreams that they're aspiring to be, and then they use it against them. Um, so. I think that her love of children and things like that, they, they use that to get her to leave this home. Whitney was looking forward to uh, getting a job up here. She was looking forward to, um, she was going to work on a GED program. She was, um, those were the two things that we were looking forward to at, at the time of her going missing. Is we were looking at those two things for her. She was excited to, you know, start, start a new job. She had worked previously um, in her previous residence, but when she came to New York, she didn't have a job up here. So we, we um, she was going to start looking out and trying to find something that she thought she would like to do. Now, when you say looking for a job up here, Whitney came to you from Alabama about a month ago, that's correct? That's correct. She sent me a text and said she wanted to come stay with me. And uh, I thought about it and, you know, I said, okay, if you want to come, you can come. That's what grandmas do, right? That's what grandmas do. That's right. So now we're going to talk about the questions and circumstances of her disappearance. Um, can you walk us through the last time anyone saw Whitney or the last conversation that you had with her? Um, I work night shifts, so when I got home that morning, um, before I went to bed, she was up in the kitchen and seemed fine. There was no distress, no, you know, she wasn't mad about anything. There was no problems. Um, we really didn't talk a lot because, you know, I was getting ready to head to bed. So I went to bed, and then um, I woke up about 12.30, and I got up because I couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up for a while, and I was sitting in the kitchen, and my son was in there, and Whitney came into the kitchen, and we talked a little bit. She made a comment. I was eating something that she thought was odd that you would eat with ranch dressing, which surprised me because she put ranch dressing on everything. But, um, you know, she made a comment about that and she was fine. Again, there was no, no signs of distress. She wasn't mad about anything. She wasn't, she hadn't been crying. She wasn't upset. Um, so she went back to her room and then about 1 30, I went back to bed and her room is beside my room. And I heard her in there talking on her phone and I said, Whitney, I'm going back to bed. And she said, okay, mama. And so I went back to bed, I dozed off. And then at two 30, my son woke me up, asked me where Whitney was. And I said, she's in her room, I suppose. And he said, no, her door's open. She's not in the bathroom. I don't know where she's at. So we got up looked around and it's been a nightmare since has Whitney ever disappeared before even for a short period of time no no mm -mm. never the concern that i have and i know that it's a concern that a lot of people share is that she didn't seem to take any clothing with her she, she didn't take any supplies no makeup no deodorant like all of that stuff was still at the house she took nothing with her except for herself and uh, the lack of taking personal belongings, like BC said up above, you know, it really makes you question, did she even intend to be gone for a long period of time? What if she was just... Well, we know she did take her personal uh, hygiene stuff. She took shampoos and a tough brush and all that sort of stuff. So we know that. Meeting up with this person for the very first time. What if she was just meeting up with someone and and was just going to meet them in person because she was in love with them or, or something along those lines. Um, and then she just disappeared. Yeah, she wasn't planning to be gone long. 
She was getting into chakras, which I honestly, I don't know much about them. So chakras means wheel and refers to energy points in your body. They're spinning discs of energy that stay opened and aligned as they correspond to bundles of nerds, nerves, major organs, and other areas where energetic body affects our emotional and physical well-being. So this is a beginner's guide to chakras. And so that's something that she was allegedly getting into. Looks like it has something to do with like meditation and and things like that. So anything to learn from the sun her grandma was talking about. I'm not sure. We will hopefully hear more. hygiene stuff. Um, she left behind, which is really surprising. She left behind a, um, a bear her grandfather had. It was his. And when he passed away, she wanted it. And so I gave it to her. She left that behind, which kind of surprised me. And then she also had um, a bear from when she was a child. And it's old and it's stuffing's coming out, but she treasured that bear. And she had a little unicorn that was in her crib when she was a baby. And her, her mom said she would never leave that. Anytime they were moving or anything, she would always hold on to those two items, especially the unicorn. And make sure they didn't get lost, you know, in the move. And so she left those three items that I'm surprised she would leave. The efforts to find Whitney. How has the community been involved in the search for Whitney so far? We did a community-wide um, search of our town in South Salem where she became missing. Um, the community has shown a great deal of support. Um, they shared our Facebook posts. We've gotten a lot of requests, you know, questions. Have you checked here? Have you done this? You know, trying to help. Um, we've had offers for, to put up flyers. The community support has been has been amazing. What actions have authorities taken to help find Whitney? Authorities, um, they have um, they have searched one residence they thought was she might be there, but that was a no go. But, but um, they're working. They worked with the FBI yesterday. Um, I know you and your team have put effortless hours, just amazing hours, into uh, searching and and talking to people, and and it's just been amazing that the help that everyone has been. Are there any plans for future search efforts currently? Well. We're not searching on the ground as far as in our little town anymore. We don't believe she's there, but we, we're going to continue to search. We're not going to stop until we find Whitney. Um, you know, we're putting out flyers. We've got some news coverage. We're working on getting more news coverage. We are still posting posters, posting on Facebook, um, you know, on all social media platforms, really. We're trying to get the word out there that hopefully someone has seen her. Someone's. Oh, I've got my teeth into this one now, and I'm not letting go of this one because summer isn't right. So I'll be doing a lot more lives on this young girl. Sees her, someone can, you know, let the authorities know, you know, I saw her here or she is here and just just get the word out there. How can the public assist in the search for Whitney? Well, like I said, we need we need a public we need a public presence. Whitney needs to be Whitney needs to be seen by the nation. Her picture, her flyer, her name, it needs to be seen by the nation. This I don't believe that we can handle this locally. I think we need to go nationwide and the public can share, share, share her, her posts or posts in Facebook, Instagram, wherever they see them. They could keep an eye out. They could, um, if someone wants to post flyer somewhere, you know, we'll do our best to get them to them. Um, biggest thing is just, just communicate and get, get her into the public eye. With that being said, how has Whitney's disappearance affected your family and her friends? Well, my world has stopped. Um, I haven't been back to work. Um, every day it's, I'm spent staring at my phone, figuring out where I can post what, who I can contact, going out and posting flyers, whatever I can do. It's it's devoted to Whitney. Um, and my son is the same way. We haven't, I mean, our world has just stopped. It's just, it's all about Whitney right now. We have to find Whitney. Is there any message you wish to share with the public about Whitney and the importance of community support in situations like this? Whitney is actually, Whitney is an amazing, amazing person. She has a big heart. She's kind hearted. Um, she's a little vulnerable. She, um, 
could easily be persuaded. And I think that's been um, her, her definite downfall. Um, I just want them to know that we need their help. We need help finding my granddaughter. We need her back home. We just need her to be, we need her face out there. We, I need, we need help. We need the community and we need the nation to help us. We need to bring this baby home. How can people reach out if they have any information regarding what we're about? Um, they can contact the Wallace County Sheriff's Department. They can contact um, the Rescue 101 SARS Inc. Um, their information is on her flyers. They can contact us through Facebook. Our, I know our posts are getting out. Um, they can just just call them. They think they see something. Call their local authorities, you know, and and just share, 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 share to get her get her out there. Get her, get her picture out there. Get her name known. Make it a household name. If Whitney is watching this video, is there a message that you wish to for her to be able to hear during this interview? Whitney, if you're watching this, please come home. We need you. I love you. We all love you, and we miss you dearly. And we need to know you're safe. I need to know that you're safe. Please. Please contact us. You're not in trouble. I'm not going to be mad. Just please come home. And the last question as we wrap up this interview, is there anything else you'd like to share about Whitney or the search that we haven't covered? Just that, like I said, Whitney, Whitney is very vulnerable. Um, she, she could be, uh, she's a little immature for 16. So she could be uh, easily groomed or persuaded by the wrong person. And Whitney has had in her past, in her younger years, uh, Whitney had a rough start to life. And that's why when she asked me to come stay with me, I said yes, because I wanted to make a difference in her life. And I wanted, I wanted things to be better for her. And so I just asked if we could get out and bring her back home. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Linda. This is Chief Sorek with Rescue 101 Search and Rescue. If anyone knows the whereabouts of Whitney Hatfield, please reach out to the local authorities. Um, you can contact the Ross County Sheriff's Office directly, or you can message through Facebook. Or contact. Right. I've now found that interview. I was looking for that interview, remember? The first interview with the mother. I already had it open. There's me looking for it again. So we're gonna go back on this. Eric. Oh. Uh, Yeah, Trisha and I want to go ahead and show you some of these flyers that you might have seen already that show Whitney and her missing case here. You might see them if you're in the Clinton County and Highland County areas because she has family there, but they're starting to pop up here in Loveland because this is where her mother lives. And we spoke with her mom who tells us that she feels lost without her. I've always said uh, since becoming a mother that my worst fear is not knowing where my children are. For almost two months, Michelle Hatfield has been trying to find her daughter, 16-year-old Whitney Hatfield. There's been nothing. Um, no sighting of her, no just crickets, nothing. Whitney was last seen on Main Street in South Salem, Ohio on March 7th. Only her toothbrush and a few toiletries were missing from Whitney's room. That's it. She didn't take her purse, uh, no extra shoes, no clothes. Everything was there. Michelle says the family is originally from Alabama, but Whitney asked to move to Ohio after her grandfather died. She wanted to, to come to Ohio, uh, according to what she told me, um, and support her grandmother. And it, it seemed so mature for her age at the time that I entertained the idea of her doing that. Michelle says Whitney has talked to older men online before and is worried she is with one. So I'm really concerned that she was groomed. There's no way that she's with a child. They would have been out of resources by now. But the mom also says Whitney has never run away before or snuck out and has never done drugs. Never had that kind of trouble with sis. Michelle says not knowing where her daughter is keeps her up at night and she also has problems eating. Why do you feel guilty when you eat? I don't know if she's eating. It's indescribable. The pain and the fear because it's always there.
Right. Hmm. Hmm. I think that was the adoptive mother. Right. Uh -oh. Because she said they came from Alabama. Right. And it says here, um, there we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So she, she was originally this young girl. All right, let's put a picture up. This young girl was originally from Montana. That's where her bio mother lived. She was adopted, right, and then moved to Alabama, right, and from Alabama, she went from there to her grandmother's. I agree, adopted, I have so many questions, the grandmother says she had a rough start to her life, is that why bio mom? With bio, with only bio mum, or does that include adopted? How old was she when she was adopted? Yeah, that's another question. How old was she when she was adopted? So, I'm going to try and find as much as. If I have to email. The grandmother or the aunt to get the names of like the bio mother, the adopted parents. I don't need to say I just need I just need confirmation that that interview we've just seen there was the adopted mother because I can't see her going back to her mother. Right? But in that every interview with the grandmother, it said she said something about that. Um, oh, I can't remember now. But I'm going to have to, this. This is a lot deeper than just to run away. This is a young girl who well, probably in Tuesday met up with someone, right? On the pretense that she's going to be babysitting, right? But why would she put that other note under in her brother's bedroom? Why? It doesn't make sense. I think the first note, I know handwriting changes because if I look with my notebook now, my handwriting changes all the time. Well, she's going to, they're going to get it, they're going to get it from me. They're going to get this coverage from me because some it doesn't pass my smell test. Some it stinks and I want to know what it is. And there's so many questions I've got now about the parents and the uh, adopted parents, the bio mother. You know what I mean? And if need be, I'll email the grandparents and say, this is the, an interview, and send them the link. Can you tell me if this is a bio mother or, or uh, adoptive mother? Because I believe she's alive for being trafficked. So why would she write that ever note? Get grandma. Stop grandma from phoning the police or whatever. It won't end well. Right? What won't end well? So, and when did she put that note under her brother in her brother's room or under his pillow?
it makes sense. You know what I mean? Does it make sense that second note? How did that second note get there? That's another question. I'm telling you now, I've got so many questions, I'm going to have to sort this out. How did second note get there? Did she come back at all? But if she came back, someone would have seen her. But this girl, she's being trafficked unless, unless her bio mother has arranged for someone to take her. You know what I mean? Has her bio mother in Montana got anything to do with this? Because her adoptive parents live in Alabama. So, so there's two possibilities. She's either been groomed and abducted, right, or for trafficking. Could have been threatened, so she wrote second note. Hmm. She could have wrote it just before she left to go and meet up with this person. But why would she go and meet someone if she thought it would would an end one? You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. If she knew by phoning the police, bringing the police in, that would not end well. Why would she go and meet this person? I do know that perhaps she was being groomed and I probably said if you tell anyone we know where your parent your grandmother lives. You know what I mean? So this is just I wanna know why that second note Because obviously the, well, it isn't her brother, is it? It's um, her uncle, really. It's not her brother who lived at the house. It was her uncle. Because the grandmother said her son found a note under his pillow. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, possibly. Or, like, don't tell your family, because if if police are involved, then it's not going to end well. Because uh, I'll end up in prison if they find us. You'll end up in you. Uh, you I'll end up in prison. You'll end up in care and all that. Lot. No, it's. You've got to get into the mind of a, someone who grooms. And I can't do that because I don't groom people. Ooh. But you've got to think, for a case like this, you've got to think of the person who's doing the grooming. So you've got to think of all the possibilities of why she, why would she go somewhere if she knew that it would end up bad if the police were informed. I know how you feel, yeah. It's, this is.
Well, I'll put my email up for you if you want. You can email me. Right? Email me, and then I can read it. And I'll try and get in touch with the grandparents or someone to figure out all this between the mother, the bio mother, and the adopted parents. Right? Because, as I said, it could be someone from her mother's side of the family. A bio mother's side of the family who's been chatting to her. So we need to know someone between Alabama and... Where was he? Where was it? The grandmother lived? Where did she missing from? Um, Ohio. Somewhere between Alabama and Ohio. I don't do emails. <laughs> <coughs> Are you on my face? Are you on Facebook? You can chat on Facebook. Right. Um. Uh, get my link for you. Right, if I can find my link for this Facebook page, I don't know about the time. What is more? Oh God! When my page will go down. Look, I'm not, I'm not going to go up, I want to go down. Right, how can I get my... Um, I think I have to get my... Um, I was going to say... I get to it all. Um, that's my Facebook page. Right? Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? That's it. That's it. I think that's the one. I think this is the link you need for my Facebook page. And then we can chat on Messenger. Okay? And we can discuss this case and put things together and whatever. Because there's a lot to this case which I'm not understanding. Either way, she's being abducted, right? Because we know they lost the scent, the dogs lost the scent after she came out to that cemetery and walked up the road, right? So either way, she's got into a car and she's not able to get home. But what's confusing me is the one in one letter I can understand. I'm stop. I'm going to with a friend to do so to babysit, and um, all that lot. Well, I can understand that, but it's that second letter. Why would she go with someone if she thought she was going to be in danger or the pet? Why didn't she just say, "Look"? Grant, Grant, I need help. You know what I mean? I need help. I've been chatting to this person online. He's making threats. You know what I mean? She must have known before she left that her it, it wasn't safe. She must have known. 
it, you know what I mean? That second letter tells me she did, she knew it wasn't safe. By that second letter, she knew it wasn't safe. Hmm. But what about um, the uncle, the grandmother's son? Yeah? Could he be involved? I don't think so, because why would he put a letter like that under his pillow? You know what I mean? That second letter does not make sense. I know over here, we, I've mentioned this before, we had a big case over here a couple of years ago about young girls in a certain town being trafficked. Right? Being trafficked. And they had phones and when they got a phone call they had to go so they just get up from there and leave the house and go they get picked up in a car and they get took to another town another city whatever brought back the, the next day right and we could never understand why the parents were saying where the hell are you going what are you doing? Why aren't you coming? Why are you, you know what I mean? Where are you being? Why these ch girls weren't talking, weren't talking to them about anything? And it came out that they were threatening them. You tell your parents, we know where you live. You know what I mean? And one mother actually stood up and said, look, I'm not having this. My daughter's not coming. And she got threatened. She got threatened. The mother got threatened by them. But the police still wouldn't do nothing. Because it was politically. It was very political. It's because those of a certain race, a certain religion, the police didn't want to step on any toes. <clears throat> it's all right for these people to come into our country and do what they do to our young girls. But that's okay, isn't it, law enforcement over here? Yeah. Okay, we understand now. You let them come over here in the boatloads. They come over here. They get put up in hotels. They're I'm not joking. Our government has taken over so... Not, I don't know about Scotland, but I know that England, the government down there, have taken over so many hotels to put these people up in, right? And in these towns and cities where these people are being housed in hotels, right? They, so many young girls are being harassed and everything. Harassed, assaulted. But it's okay, because we can't step on their toes. It's okay. We can't step on their toes because, oh no, God forgive us if we mention anything about a certain race or a certain religion. God forgive us. We can't have that. Okay, is my Facebook page. There it is. I, hold on, I've got to take this picture off. <laughs> I've got to take that picture off. Okay, so so they do. They threaten the families. They, so these young girls are being took left, right, and centre. And over here in the UK, you can be in one town within. You can be across a, a large timeline within minutes. Within minutes, you can be out of one town and in another. And that's classed as trafficking. That's bringing them down to Birmingham, where I used to live. Right? And um, all, over the, all over the UK, I was taking them. So...
But I've done my I will do a live on that or even a video on that, but I don't want to because it's it's a, it is a bit political and it, I don't want to stir up any hate on here. If I could if I can manage to do a video on it, I will. But the one guy who kept speaking up about this case, he was getting put in prison, in jail, everything, constantly being arrested. Constantly being arrested because he was speaking up for these girls. Right? Even when these guys are being arrested and he was outside, like, you know, like some YouTubers in the USA go to the courts and They've got the cameras and they're filming them as they're coming into the court. If he did that, they'd, they'd pick him up and uh, put him in jail. Honest to God, it was ridiculous, that case was. But there's my picture, Crime and Justice for All, AD. It's my normal profile pic that I use for everything. I use that profile pic for my Instagram, my TikTok, which I don't use. I just post little short, little one minute videos on there, right about these children. Um, and the same on my Instagram, I just post one minute or ten minute videos on there at the most. Five, ten, five minute videos. Um, but. My you, I have got an X account which I post. Like, this is going live now on my X account, and there's no one on X watching at the moment. Hmm, but I, I do have a lot, not many people on Twitter come on on the weekend, so. But no, um, well, that's my email if anyone wants it, if they've got any information on this case, any ideas of this on this case, please email me or find me on Facebook, Crime and Justice for All, and message, I'll message you then, because once I accept you, just send me a message saying who you are and I can I know then. So I'm on I have it on my phone, but on my phone I've got my private Facebook account, my family account one. So I keep that separate from all of this. So But it still goes on today, I can assure you, it's still going on today in the UK. Right? Because there's so many vulnerable young girls and young boys about. <laughs> yeah. See, I had... I open this one up so that, because a lot of my people, I've only got a hand, like, but I don't even know how many I've got on that account, not many. And so they're not really into all this. They're not, which is a shame. And so I opened up another Facebook page for this only. So... But now, um, I'll tell you what, next time we have a live, next time I do a live, I'll bring you up. Okay, I'll bring you up on panel next time. I won't bother today because we're coming up to two hours. And um, if I finish early enough, I can take my tablet and get some, do some research on this case. Trying to email the grandparents because 
the time difference is like it's evening here or it's like maybe mid afternoon wherever they are you know what i mean so but if you just type in ad on facebook you'll find me all right so don't worry uh, next time i do a live i don't know if i'm gonna do one no you wouldn't you wouldn't be so awkward at least then on live you could say what you feel right but i'll give you a couple of days okay i'll give you a couple of days before we go live again on this case because tomorrow night i'm looking at james yoblonski who went missing a year ago next month well this month is it the first now yeah a year ago in 11 days time it will be a year that he went missing so tomorrow i'm doing a live on him right but i can do a live i've got my teeth into this cat a case at the moment so i'll probably do a live on this i did say i do sebastian on monday but unless anything new comes out and everyone's just going on about that interview with bhb and picking the bones and twisting the words and i'm going i'll give up i give up you can't do a nice interview without someone picking the bones and twisting the words it's ridiculous yes that does sound like an interesting case so i'm going to look into that one for tomorrow i've been looking into it today right trying to get some information but okay so i'm going to talk about that lab tomorrow so it'll probably be if nothing else new comes out about sebastian i can put sebastian off till tuesday and probably do this case again on monday if i get any information back i'll email the grandparents or whoever and see if i can get some information back off them because i know smiley did a live and she did an interview with us so i might try and find that i might try and find that case that live that smiley done and she said they're looking for all the help they can get all the publicity they can get so i'm um i'm um it's ridiculous sg it's like i've forgotten about what what we're all here for it's like people have just forgotten about the reason we was all here for and that was sebastian and i won't i won't ever stop talking about him i will do lives but as i said it keeps putting me off at the moment right and um what i did find out though today i was watching a youtube channel today and this youtuber phone set up to get his side of what was said about the pupil and it was he was talking to this youtuber seth was having this chat with a youtuber right and we know seth had guns before and i'm sure jay one of the another youtuber said something about him having guns in the back of his car or something like that can't remember so we know he had guns right and he's talking to this youtuber about guns well they're both talking about guns because the youtuber packs as well he carries so that was something they had in common and they're talking about guns and they're talking about certain makes of guns and everything and this youtuber pulled this information up about this one gun and said oh my god it's like two thousand five hundred dollars and seth jokingly said 
But if you buy one, you can buy me one as well. Right? So that's why it was. It was like saying a joke. But what annoys me is this YouTuber who I do like. Right? So he's had conversations with Seth, which he will never disclose. Never. But what did he go and do? He, he, he went and spoke about it. And I think, I'd like to believe that YouTuber, but I think it's more of a, a jokey uh, conversation. You have, when you're, when you're having a conversation with someone and someone goes, oh, I like that car. And you can say, well, if you've got the money to buy that car, you can buy me one. You know what I mean? And that was the sort of conversation it was like. If you've got the money to buy that, you can buy me one. It appears that the YouTuber hiding put his live private only subscribers can watch. Really? I'm a subscriber, and I've not seen him. I've not seen none of his lives. Well, he has one today, but it's more about his music. And I like his music, I must admit, I do like his music, but I thought I'm not into the music at the moment. Right? And so, what does that say, though, if he's putting... Is that to stop the haters getting to him? Because he knows his subscribers will back him. He's got a lot of good backing people who will back him. But I must admit, I do, like, I do like him. But I can't understand why he come out and said that. When he has said that he's had chats with Seth and will never disclose any of it. But he has. He's done that and done it. And that's what upsets me. That he's done that and said that. Anyway, so at the moment, I'm keeping an eye on the Sebastian Rowe's case. If anything comes out, I'm checking news channels every morning i log into my laptop and i'm typing in clicking on all my news channels that i've got on my which i'm subscribed to <laughs> anything about sebastian nick ferris anything there you know, you know what i mean i'm checking and there's nothing new coming out and as i said everything if there is any interviews everyone's just twisting it then twisting every word that seth says got people saying during that interview, telling you, kept giving little signals out to him. The YouTuber also has receipts. He wrote messages about what to cover last night. I think there was a live. I'm going to have to go and check it out, see if I can get it up on my, on my... But I've got so much to do, I can't... I want to look into this case, you know what I mean? This case of Whitney. And I can't be put off by what them like the circus is doing. I can't be tempted to go and watch the circus. I can't. It's like saying, I've got my work to do. You know, sorry, sweetheart, I can't go to the circus today. I'm busy. Do not distract me. You know what I mean? So I'm trying. Now I've got this information and I want to pick up on some things. Yeah. I, it's like the circus is at one side. When I hear something new, I will do a live. Right. Or if I see an interview that is interesting, then I'll do a live. But from now, I'm going to concentrate on this young girl. As I said, I've got that other lag I want to do out live about tomorrow. But Monday night, I'll be back on this case. Because hopefully by Monday, if I email them today, I should try and have something back off them. So, because I can't phone them. It would cost me too much to phone them. I'm in the UK. You know what I mean? So, 
even when my mobile it would cost me the earth so to charge me the earth to phone the USA. So I can only email or put comments on that page they've got. So I might put a comment, put a comment up on that page they've got. Let them know look, I'm looking into this case, is it? And I'm interested in knowing about the mother, the bio mother, and the adopted mother and father. Is there any information you can give me on those two people? So that I can put that out there to my viewers. I am not I'm, I'm, I'm only a small channel. I'm a, and you know what I've noticed? I've had to write a message on YouTube. Right? My numbers are going down, even though every day I'm going and I'm, I've got new subscribers. And I know when I've got new subscribers because it comes up on my channel. And I always subscribe to them. Whether I've got no subscribers or nothing, I always subscribe to them. Five new subscribers today. Well, from yesterday or whenever till today. How many subscribers have I lost? Five. So I'm thinking, hold on, I'm getting new subscribers, but my numbers are going down. Sort this out, YouTube, because something isn't right there. So, see how that goes on. So, yeah, I'll get back on this case on Monday, but tomorrow I'm on about that case. And if you look for SG, I'll have you up on panel. But only if you want. You don't have to. And you don't have to show your face like I don't. I don't show my face. No one wants to see this ugly mush. They really don't. So. Yeah, there is a lot of weird stuff going on with YouTube. And it's, I'm thinking, hold on, I've just had five new subscribers. I should have hit my 500 target by now. But, oh no, you just, I've lost, lost five, five, sorry, five new subs, five subscribers. So, I'm thinking every time I get a new subscriber, I'm not getting it added on. And they're taking it off me. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? Give me back my subscribers, you little thief. <laughs> so, see what's happening. See what happens by Monday if I lose any more subscribers. And I'll see if I get any new ones. Because every time I get a new subscriber, I see it come up. And well, not all of them will show. But as today, I clicked on, I subscribed to five new channels today. Because they've subscribed to me, I will subscribe to them. Right? But I've lost five subscribers. I'm thinking, I should hit my 500 target with that five. I had. 476, so I should be over my target by now. But I'm not. They're taking them off me. I swear to God, I feel like getting YouTube and giving them a good old slap. Anyway, so I'm going to leave that there. That was interesting tonight. Got a bit of information out. More questions though than anything else. Right, but I'll find that out and I'll get that sorted out hopefully for Monday. So Monday I'll be going live again on this young girl on Whitney. But tomorrow night I'll be looking at James Yablonski, who's 13 years old. Get this in by YouTube. <laughs> no, thank you. No. And they're so strict. Right? Like, if I play a certain song on here, I can get it with flag it. I'm going, oh, do I hear people playing all these songs on their bridge, on their lives. Are they getting flagged? You know what I mean? And I've got, I play one minute of a certain song and I'll get flagged. It doesn't stop my YouTube, my channel, and my video going out. Right. I did have one uh, about a month ago 
which got flagged and I wasn't going to put my video on. So I just went in and took out that little bit, you know what I mean? So that my video could go out. But everyone's are getting so strict, it's ridiculous. You can't, like, you can't say the word, like, for what I want to say, you have to say pew pew. Yeah, I hear people saying that word all the time on their lives, I'm going, if I said that, I'd have to go in and cut it. It's ridiculous. And then you've got people on like, Twitter going, I d why do you use uh, like certain words? Why don't you just say the proper word? Because we can't. We cannot say a lot of words on YouTube. We can't. But people on Twitter just don't understand that. So... It's just the way YouTube are. Twitter, I can go and put a video out and just do a video and just put it on Twitter and I can say what the hell I like in that video. As long as it doesn't go on YouTube, I can say what the hell I like in that video if it just goes on Twitter. So, anyway, thank you for being here tonight those in the bushes so thank you for being here and thank you for your support please give it a like because this video would be grateful because we need to get this information out about this young girl this young girl yeah let's give a picture of her this young girl okay she needs to be found and brought home because something isn't right there so please give it a like, share it, that would be even better, share the video, get it out there, put it on any social network you're on, Facebook, Instagram, you name it. Whatever you can put it on, you put it on. Thank you, SG. So, and hopefully, if anyone subscribes, I won't lose any more members because... I hope to God I start seeing the numbers go back up. Right? So, I know every month I normally lose one or two. But that's because YouTube do a check and sometimes it may not be true subscribers. It could be watching and people. Um, subscribe. People who just literally sit there and hit all these keys in front of them and they, they hit one button and they subscribe to all these channels sort of thing they like robots that's it the robots so every so often you do get um one or two took off you depending on how many is in your channel so if you've got over a thousand you could lose maybe five or more right because there are a lot of robots out there and they do weasel them out sometimes. But anyway, I'd just like to say goodnight and I'm going to play out with this young girl. I'm not going to do my usual finish. I'm going to play out with this young girl. Alright, I'm going to just get my music up. And I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in.